cleaned up. I was looking at my rear main seal, how to install, and basically here's where I'm at. This uh, this big edge of it, you can see there, goes towards the front of the engine, the front being over here. So towards the inside, basically from the rear, and you do offset about three eighths of an inch, as you can see there. And so then that way you're not having a part line with the seal and the block here. Um, kind of just help minimize the leaking that way. Now when I install this, there's gonna be some RTV applied on the corners right here. Um, just because, you know, that that rear main cap there is gonna be, that's basically the back of the block here. So you put a little bit of RTV right here and here, and that'll help prevent uh, leaks also. All right, got my, got my main bearings in, and I've already measured everything, and Got that all wrote down, got my gaps measured. I had to order a one uh, different size bearing, a one under size, but otherwise, got my crank ready to go in. See if I can gently do this. Got her in. I'm going to apply a little bit more lube. Well, I guess I got it on the other side of the bearings, but basically just want to make sure it's just going to turn free. And for me, it seems like it. This grease I'm using is a little bit thicker, so it does kind of sit, but I like that because if you have a just sitting for a little bit extra long then it seems to sit in place better so yeah that's in the main bearings on you notice that there's a arrow towards the front here so make sure you get that right So before I do this uh, thrust bearing and last main cap here, you'll notice on the back of the block here, where I was talking about that, adding that RTV, we just have, set this down. So right here, on this corner here, it's just made it right to the block, right here. So there is no gasket right here, and so that's why you add that RTV right here on the corners. And some people say, you know, put a little dab on the rear main seal. You can, I've heard it both ways. Um, just be careful not to overdo it. If you do put it in there, if you do overdo it, you can risk uh, ruining your entire seal. So just be aware of that and put a little bit of grease on your seal too so that you don't ruin it on initial startup too. So I noticed in my kit here, I got this little feeler gauge or whatever you want to call it, um, dial indicator piece of paper. <laughs> but basically, you set this in here, and you put it on the other side, and just set your two-piece seal so that you have them offset equally. Um, this was provided by the seal manufacturer, which was 
Felpro for me. Um, they didn't say anything about putting sealant on the end of the on the edges of the seal, which I kind of goobered a little bit right here, but no sealant on the ends, but they did say put sealant on the caps here and then throw the throw the main cap on. Okay, so I got this all done. Nothing's torqued. So on these four bolt caps, it is 70 foot pounds on the inside, 65 on the outside, and of course and on the two ends it's also 70. So so the only 65s are the outside ones here. But basically you do three well, you don't have to, but it's recommended you do three equal increments. So you start on the inside, so inside, inside, out, and then you work your way back out on the crankshaft. So you start at the middle and work your way back and forth. I mean, each cap you start on the inside and work your way out. And just three equal increments. So I'm gonna do uh, probably 25, 50, and then 70, I'll have to adjust my torque wrench mid cap, but 70, 70, 65, 65 on these. Here we go, crankshaft is in, it spins, need to check how tough it is, make sure there's not any tight spots going around, um, basically just spinning it, you can just feel to see how it spins, as long as it's smooth all the way around, if it feels smooth at least, um, I'm going to have to two hand this one, but um, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, I forgot what the actual torque is spinning this around, but there's actually a little bit of force. Um, what it takes to spin these around, especially um, now if you're using motor oil, it's going to be a lot less. But um, this grease, it's doesn't uh, loop move as easily on initial startup, so it's going to take a little bit more force. Um, motor oil, I think it's honestly like two foot pounds to spin this, but grease. It takes a little bit and I just got the pleasure of noticing I have a bad timing gear I had left that on there but I'm gonna have to pull it off put a new one on so conveniently I have a new one because you buy a timing set you get the whole set but I'll get to take that off too so but otherwise uh, yeah this one's in I'm gonna check the um, the thrust next so basically I put a pry bar and pry the crankshaft all the way to one side and then all the way back and you can use a dial indicator that's the easiest way you pry it all the way to one side and put a dial indicator on the end of the crank here set it to zero pry it the other way and check what your thrust is for a small block chevy three to eleven thousandths of axial movement here so 
I'm going to check that out and see where we're at. I misspoke. So when you measure your crankshaft end play uh, like this, you should have all the bolts torqued to like 10 to 20 foot pounds, and but also tighten your main caps on your thrust bearing, and that should get you the actual value. So I did that, retorqued it, or loosened everything up, retorqued it down to like 15, and I got 4,000. So did I really have to? No, but it's good that I checked because now I know it's all set. Now get to retorque everything back to the 65 and 70 foot pounds.